Welcome to the month of April. It's your program of choice, Health Affair on AIT, a platform where we focus on public health issues, challenges of women and children, with the aim of preferring lasting solutions. I am your regular anchor, Ushua Moa Danis. Our focus for this week is on first aid. But let's take you through our new segment before we start right away. <coughs> <coughs> One passenger, one passenger, big auntie. Come on, tell my boss now. Hey, conductor, this cough is serious. I beg, you need to go to the hospital. Hospital? Ah, auntie, if I go hospital now with this cough, those people will just say I have COVID-19. No, they won't. Doctors say cough symptoms are different in every condition. Some are dry, others are wet, like your own. God bless you, auntie. I have told this my conductor. A cough has refused to go. And it could be tuberculosis. <coughs> ah, conductor, check ammo. Make you day sure. Because who no go? No, no go, no. no. Check that cup for tuberculosis. Check ammo, check ammo. If your cough is more than two weeks, it could be tuberculosis. TB tests and TB treatment are free. Just call the National TB Hotline on 3340 for information on where to get the test. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health with support from the American people. Make a difference in our communities. And what we do is put a smile on the faces of people. This year, the club has been able to organize some impactful programs. We have had uh, the hard drug use and its impact on the mental health of school children, and that took place at Alan River Community High School in Antony Village. We had blood pressure health checks, we had oral health and projectile screening, we had um, pre eye glasses, we had health talk and hepatitis. We gave jobs out. We, we, the people we found that needed treatment for tissues that were picked up there, we sent, we directed them to the hospital and we're following up on them. So Lagos Cadets has been in the business of community health screening and doing so much to the health sector. One project after another. Lagos Apex Lions Club is indeed making positive impact. The latest outreach by the wonderful club of men and women committed to the life of service is the cleanup of Marwa Coastal Community in Lekki area of Lagos State, Nigeria. The environment is one of the focus areas of Lions Clubs International. And we just decided to do it differently this time around. We decided to come to the coast because we can see the amount of degradation that's happening with the communities that live around the coastal line. Just take it away from the normal, plant a tree, clean the drains, clean the marketplace that we have done in the past. So this time around, we decided to partner with Stephanie and Echo Restoration Foundation of Nigeria to come clean up the coastline and still put a smile on the faces of the community on the coastline. They didn't stop at that, but went further with the medical outreach, feeding and distribution of gifts to many. We've done the three, four in one package this time around, trying to include all the focus areas of the Lions Club International. So this time around, we're doing the coastal cleaning, we're having a medical outreach where we're doing diabetes checkup, we're doing blood pressure checks, we're giving medications, they have a doctor on ground consulting, and we're giving them drugs. And then we're having food, there's hunger relief, it's all part of it's one of the focus areas of the Lions Clubs International, so we're giving food packs out this time around, and also we're giving gifts. We have clothes, we have things for the home, we have shoes, we have handbags, anything just to make them happy. I know that this humanitarian service is for real. Led by Lion Dr. Matilda Braimo, Lagos Apex Lions Club is one of the vibrant clubs that makes up thousands of Lions Club international communities across the globe, doing great things to foster peace and better life for humanity. Rotary Club of Bagada South, District 9110, Nigeria, has built and commissioned 10 blocks of toilet worth 10 million naira to the Papa Olorunda Community Primary School, Ibafo Ogun State. At the occasion, the District Governor, Rotary District 9110, Nigeria, Rotarian Rebi Belu, who commissioned the facility, says Rotary International 
will not relent in its efforts in servicing humanity. This is where the impact will be more felt. Lottery, we don't just go into projects. We do what we call need assessment. Need assessment must have been done for this community, most especially for this public uh, community primary school that uh, believe they need toilet. You know, toilet is very essential. It cannot be too big. It can never be too much for a, a school. How many puppies are they talking of? Are you talking of 10 puppies? Are you talking of 20? You must be talking of hundreds. So 10 uh, toilets is not too big for this kind of community. And mind you, the school will continue to grow. What you should be talking about is sustainability. How is it going to be sustained? That is what you should be discussing now. The former district governor, 9110, Rosirian Bola Uyibade, commissioned a block of two sets of classrooms that were built by the Papa Olorunda community but was completed by the Rotary Club of Bagada South. This is our school that you see here, built by the community. We didn't see any help from the Ogo State government. That's why we cried to Rotary Club uh, of Bagada South. The community that has done basic infrastructure is done having a new look with the presence of Rotary Club International. Now, the Rotary Club of Bagada South, through the support of Rotary International, uh, with its foundation, the Rotary Foundation, was able to uh, ensure that we bring soccer to the needs of this community. And how did you do that? We were able to attract international partnership and uh, we were able to also uh, touch, uh, put together our own little resources, uh, which we combined and we used to change the face of these little children. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, the building we rehabilitated is as good as one would wish it should be. This is exactly what is obtainable in um, Western world. Then we have the need of um, bringing it down here. At the toilet, ten toilet room is with a standing generator and um, and also the pop, um, um, borehole that we serving the serving the toilets and go. One of us happens to work with the major leader of this community and he informed our member, we can be there in the sunning, that the community is totally forgotten by government. That there's no government presence at all in the community. They did not tell us that they, they don't have a toilet facility. And if children come to school, there's no toilet facility, they can be sure that there will be a lot of problems. The community development associations were grateful for the rare gesture by Rotary and used the opportunity to call on the state government to officially take over the school and make the presence of government field in the community and provide infrastructure. Open defecation is a source for so many diseases and communicable diseases for that matter and those that especially affect children. So I would advise that the government and the community members work hand in hand to ensure that as houses are being, um, foundations for houses are being laid, they're also inspecting and seeing that provisions for um, the sanitary aspects of the household is also looked into and they are made, everyone is made to install their own toilet. I appreciate the Rotary Club for the toilet they built for us. The project was made possible by the Friends of Rotary Club Bagada globally. These works are my beauty. These works show me who I am because I like who I am. This is my beauty, and I'm Daniel Kuli. Ayomide Okoli is an inspiring artist, proud of his work and who he has grown up to become. However, David and his colleagues, like Ziza Okugo and Christine Naji, didn't just come into limelight without paying a price. Daniel was diagnosed of autism at age four. We didn't know he had that. And since then, he was, it's been, he didn't have speech, nothing. But over time, when we discovered that it was autism, we enrolled him in a special school, Patrick Speech and Language Centre. And there, um, his motor skill, his speech therapy and other areas. And years after, he was integrated into a regular school. Today, we are here to celebrate um, Autism Awareness Day to show to the world that there is a voice behind autism. All hope is not lost to children.
who have autism. I like my painting. I like I like um, playing music. She's 16 years old, so it has been a 16-year journey. And um, I think she has turned me into a student and she's a teacher. She wasn't interactive, she wasn't really, but immediately she started painting on canvas, Christine became an entirely different person. My advice to parents living with uh, children with special needs, one, you get your own language, two, be patient, and three, it is not your fault. You know, I've seen many parents get weighed down because they think it's their fault, something they did that made their children you know, become this or become that. It is not your fault. It is what it is. Embrace it. Learn. The, she has taught me to overcome my challenges and be the best I could be. You know, and she's the most emotional, sociable, empathic person you can even come across. She's the most organized amongst all her siblings. He's mostly non-verbal. He's semi-verbal, uh, meaning that he only has a few words. He can't really speak because of autism. Uh, but he has found expression uh, through art and music. <laughs> it's, it's been quite a journey. Uh, it's tough for most people, especially financially. Um, everything that pertains to autism, be it therapy or um, whatever option you decide to take you know, to, to uh, manage the, the diagnosis, um, it's always expensive. With the relevant support, children with autism disorder, according to stakeholders here, have a voice. Autism is not a problem. It's we, the society, that's the problem. These children have unique talents. They have beauty in them that we can harness. We are very quick to find what they cannot do, but we want to showcase what they can do. child is unique and has something beautiful that can be Harnessed. So it's now remaining for the educators, the parents, the society to help find it. Art is an expression of what they see, how they view the world and what they can do that we can use for them to be functional in a society. Give them the tools to know, okay, this is not a death sentence, this is a, it's a, it's a, neuro, just a neurological condition and if I do this, 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 my, my, my child can have a, a, a good future. Before, when people have a kid on, on the spectrum, they just either lock them away or, or you know, or, or, or something else. But today, we, we have the tools to actually help them, and, and that's the focus. Autism is a developmental disorder that affects the nervous system, thereby impairing ability of persons to communicate and socialize. More than 100,000 cases are recorded annually in Nigeria. The growing trend of the disorder across the world informed the designation of April 2nd as World Autism Day by the United Nations. The theme for the 2022 celebration is inclusion at workplace. Distinguished elders of NSNS, Distinguished neurologists, neurology trainees, neurosurgeons, neuropsychiatrists, allied health practitioners, pediatric neurologists, a very important component of our society, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to have been given the honor to host, along with the LOC members, this year's 54th annual scientific conference. Neurological disorders remain the leading cause of morbidity and globally and nationally are a significant cause of mortality cutting across communicable and non-communicable diseases and not spared as sequelae of COVID-19. We have tried to bring together the best minds in the field nationally and internationally to serve as invited speakers and symposium discussants to address the sub-themes and trigger discussions that we hope will evolve from the conference. Right, stroke uh, is a, it's, it's a, it's a big umbrella of so many, so many things come together, but by and large it has to do with uh, compromise of the blood supplies to the brain. Uh, and in Nigeria, we have a big burden of that. It's a large burden, uh, especially uh, those arising from uh, uh, from uh, hypertension. We also have patients with epilepsy, um, especially in the rural areas. 
According to recent reports by some neurologists in Nigeria, stroke, epilepsy, and other neurological disorders remain the leading causes of morbidity at both local and national levels. Speaking at the 54th Annual Scientific Conference of Nigerian Society of Neurological Sciences with the theme Multidisciplinary Care and Collaboration in Neurological Sciences, stakeholders called for interprofessional collaboration to improve health care for the numerous Nigerians who are coming down with these diseases. Uh, biotechnology is moving very quickly. And if you are, when I was an active academic, I went to at least four or five international conferences in my area of specialty a year. And at most of them, I was presenting either papers or being an invited speaker. And it never ceased to shock me. As time went on and with each year, if you missed one year of an association's meeting and you went the year after, you were lost. And you would need to spend extra time trying to catch up with the evolution of that discipline. And most of you know I'm a hemato-oncologist. So I used to go to the American Society of Hematology or the European Society of Hematology where they're about... Uh, 8,000 people gathered with 10 screens running down a whole massive conference arena. But as soon as the opening ceremony is over, the meeting will break down into something like 10 parallel sessions. And in the 10 parallel sessions, you would have multi-subdisciplinary areas. And if you think that you are a all-rounder hematologist, that concept does not exist anymore. Because even within your discipline, you now have to sub-specialize and even sub-sub-specialize to keep up with biotechnology and the evolution in medicine. The theme is nice because we live in a world where people must work together. And for us to grow in neurosciences, there must be collaboration. I think it's nice that we have this opportunity for us to come together and to deliberate on how best we can all work together for the better health of individuals, better brain health of people in Nigeria. Either to now, we've been working individually, not achieving much, but together we can achieve more, improve care for our patients. Beyond the challenge of individual professional care, their late presentation to healthcare facilities remain a major concern. Epilepsy and stroke are treatable. Time is brain. Come to hospital on time so that you can be helped. The event provided an opportunity to appreciate individuals who have excelled in their various fields of endeavor. Given the continuous drop in the number of the daily recorded COVID-19 cases in Nigeria, the federal government decided to join the League of Countries across the globe to relax restrictions on the dreaded disease. While the voluntary use of face masks and the gathering of large crowds are already allowed into the country, a total relaxation of other rules have also been scheduled for April after the Easter celebration. I mean, if you are vaccinated, I mean, uh, I believe the restrictions, it's, you know, it's logical for restrictions to probably be removed. At least we'll have a form of herd immunity. But in apart, face masks helps in preventing other urban diseases. In other words, I'm not in support of the total lift of the ban and the use of face masks. Instead, we should go a step further to enlighten and educate our people and possibly make it more interesting by educating us on the use of face masks. However, most countries in Western Pacific and Eastern Europe have in recent times witnessed an upsurge in cases of COVID-19, a situation that is calling for questions on the total removal of the restriction. You do not need the PCR test anymore, but you still require the rapid test on arrival. But given the situation that our vaccination level is very low, we should not just copy what other countries are doing. Um, we can compare ourselves. Uh, with a country whose vaccination 
uh, who has vaccinated over 60 to 80 percent of his people. The, the, the COVID is not over yet, and therefore we need to continue to do what needs to be done. The decision to effect total relaxation of the restrictions after Easter may be part of strategies to monitor the impact Easter festivities will have on the number of cases recorded. It is expected that by then, government may see the need to act differently. Some women rights advocates have called on relevant authorities to mainstream issues of persons living with disabilities across board. Speaking at a forum on strengthening the leadership of women and girls living with disability for effective sexual and gender-based response, the advocates noted that such category of persons have been marginalized in many ways. Um, for instance, the process of getting a bus on the way out now, it can be challenging um, in the sense that some of these bus conductors, bus drivers, they are like, they cannot carry persons with disability. Looking at the ministries, we're looking at the various sector of the society to say that they need to look at the issues of uh, SGB with people with diverse ability. Because sometimes we just, uh, we ignore them, we don't think they matter. And we think that there's need for them to start putting on the height, you know, on the, on, on the agenda of any social development across board. So whether it's the justice system, whether it's the health system, whether it's the education system, whatever area that their issues are mainstreamed. Cultural belief have also not helped the situation, resulting to the challenge of integration of persons with disability into the society. They live in our communities, but we do not respect their right. We see them that they are different. They face various challenges of integration in our society, they are not really accepted. Welcome back. First aid is initial help given to a casualty involved in an accident or sudden sickness before the secondary intervention by medical experts. With the crisis across the country and globally, it is important for everyone to know about first aid and get involved. The usefulness of first aid cannot be overemphasized. The fact that first aid has saved many across the globe, especially in Nigeria, you can't overemphasize that. First aid is a key element of things you need when you need to save people during emergencies. First, what is first aid? It's the first skill that assistance or help given to somebody during an emergency situation before the arrival of a doctor or before you take the person to the hospital. And what are the reasons we want to give first aid? We want to save life, we want to prevent the condition from becoming worse, and we want to promote recovery. Now, talking about safety and security as regards first aid, when we talk about safety and security, basically we are talking about dangerous situations that happen during emergencies. Safety, you have to consider safety for yourself, safety for the injured persons, safety for bystanders. And when we talk about safety in this category now, when in a COVID situation, we talk of you putting on your mask, you are going to deal with blood situation, we expect that you put on your hand gloves. You know, these are ways of dealing with safety. You are in a road traffic accident, for example, you want to put on your sea caution sign. These are ways of dealing with safety because if you put such um, things in place, it helps to prevent you from being injured or getting infection as the case may be whereas security has to do with securing the environment you want to ensure that the environment is safe for you and the persons you are attending to so you see that when an emergency happens in some cases you want to condor the area so that people are able to have quality access to be able to help these persons we know like in lagos or anywhere in nigeria when incidents happen everybody wants to come there and gather to see what is happening but ideally these people should be dispersed they should condor the area push them back so that we are able to manage the situation better. Once the area is safe for you, then that is where you start your first aid. And you start with the ABC of life. The ABC, the A is the airways. Ensure that the airways is open. Dealing with first aid, you have to ensure that the casualty phase airways is open. Then, because we said that it is only air, if you are not breathing, that can take your life easily. And it's maintained open. Then the B, you check whether that casualty is breathing. The breathing is checking the falling and rising of the chest and also taking your hand close to the north to hear the warm air coming from the person breathing. So those are the two things. Then the C is by the time A, B were drawn and you are suspecting that casualty is not breathing, then that's where C comes in. C is the compression, compressing the heart. We call it cardiopulmonary resuscitation. That is pressing the heart 30 times, then you give two breathing continuously onto when the professional arrive or onto when refer the casualty to the nearby facility. Other aspect of 
the, 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 the sea, when you find out that the casualty is uh, 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 unconscious, when you do this, the CPR, then the other thing that will argument is the defibrillation, which is the D aspect, where it's a machine. We, we are advocating that any uh, uh, organization or any department or any uh, unit that has more than 50 uh, 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 staff, 50 workers there, is good for them to have this defibrillative machine that can augment in your emergency respondent. Then the next aspect is the bleeding aspect. If somebody is bleeding, a human being has about six to seven liters of blood in his body. So for the blood to drain completely, it will take longer period. But once ARWC deal with it, then the next step is you go for the bleeding. Where if somebody is bleeding, you ensure that you have you are safe by wearing your glove or covering your hand. Then you deal with the bleeding by stopping the bleeding. Stopping the bleeding could be either direct or indirect. Direct by pressing the bleeding site. Indirect by applying bandage on the the, the bleeding aspect or compressing where the, that, the, that area is supplying blood to, to that area. Then we have the bones cases. The bones is a situation where somebody is completely burnt, then you can uh, uh, ensure that you relieve the, 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 the pains or you reduce the burning process by cooling the, the, the area. Then the next aspect is the broken limbs, which you can say can stop. The broken limbs, if somebody is fractured, you ensure that you immobilize the affected limb by either using the body as a splint or look for external splint and immobilize the area. And those are the three B force we say. One is the breathing problem. B is the uh, uh, bleeding, then bands, then broken lips. Those are the four Bs of emergency interventions. Uh, an average human has about six to seven liters of blood in the body. So the importance of that blood is when you allow that person to lose 2.5 already from that six liter, what is remaining? And how many percent does the brain need to work? So you should look at all these things. If that person has lost enough blood, before you know it, the chances of survival will become slim. So that is the importance of blood in the body. So you need to stop the bleeding first before you do any other thing, even before you move them to the hospital. If you don't stop them, you carry a casualty with a pool of blood, put inside the vehicle, you don't know what you are going to encounter on your road. So the person may lose more blood before you get to the hospital. That is why it is important you carry out your first aid treatment before going to the hospital. Bleeding, we have different types of uh, uh, bleeding, arterial bleeding, venous bleeding, and capillary bleedings. So these are the type of bleeding we have in the body. They have different colors. You may not know. We have the one that is bright red, which is arterial bleeding, dark red, which is uh, venous bleeding, and purple red, which is cap capillary bleeding. All this matters a lot when there is injury. And the uh, recognition of bleeding, yes, if you see any blood coming out visibly, that is... Uh, 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 external. That is external bleeding, but the one that is not visible, you may hardly know the person is bleeding. At times, it becomes visible when it comes to orifices, coming out from the orifices. So those ones are internal bleeding, and you need to also recognize them that once this thing happens, that means the person is bleeding internally, and you may not need to waste time before taking that person to the hospital. But when the bleeding becomes visible, all you need to do is to apply pressure, and stop the bleeding. That should be your aim. Your aim of bleeding is to stop it. Your aim of treating bleeding is to stop it. No other thing. Don't look at any liquid form or this. Just get a pad, get material, apply pressure directly. The bleeding stops. Then you take the person to the hospital. Things I have mentioned, in case if there is no bleeding from the orifices, it's also important if the casualty is stay conscious, you ask the casualty question. Some will be requesting for water which is obvious that they will be having something eternally. So when they request for water, you see some part of their body is swollen at this color, just know that the person may be having internal bleeding. When somebody is requesting for water, know that there may be damage to internal body. So when, once you give water, it's not good enough to take when there is internal bleeding. So it can lead to complication and the person can easily give, give up after drinking the water. So you should avoid that. Uh, they, we usually say 
uh, what goes up, the law of gravity says what goes up will definitely come down. That's why anytime you are treating for bleeding, you make sure that that part of the body is elevated, if possible. If it happens to the lower extremity, you lay the person down and elevate that part of the body so that the flow of blood will reduce. So when we, come, when we talk about a casualty moving out of a, an accident scene, allowing them to walk away is very, very dangerous for them. Number one, they could be in shock. They may not walk too far before they will slump and that will be the end. So it's very dangerous. They may be having internal bleeding and they may be in shock. So all you need to do is to stop them, sit them down, and treat them for shock. It's very important. You guide them, keep them there. Fractures. We already know in fractures and injury to the bone. The bone could either break, bend, or crack. So your aim of treating fracture is to immobilize the affected area. You have to restrict, restrain that particular spot from further movement. So that is your aim. Because if you allow that to happen, if you allow the particular place to, to further continue movement, what is going to cause maybe, uh, maybe complications, especially when somebody has fracture of the ribs, and you still allow the hand to move. Before you know it, the edges of the broken bone can pierce through the vital, any of the vital organs, and it becomes complication. So that is very dangerous to human, uh, to an, uh, a casualty that had a fracture. That's why you need to immobilize all fractures before you take them to the hospital. Just joining us is Elta Fe on AIT. Next on the program is our nutrition segment. An aspect of the program where we we'll give you information about food, fruits, and their nutritional value to help you make informed choices. Scent leaf, commonly known as clove basil in English and ephemi in Yoruba, is a strong aromatic herb native to Nigeria, Ghana, and some parts of Africa and Asia. It is found in farms, gardens, and mainly used as a spice for cooking delicacies due to its aromatic taste. Scent leaf has antibacterial activities against Staphylococcus aureus, Salmonella, and Candida albicans. It is also a repellent against houseflies, mosquitoes, and other insects. As a vegetable seasoning, it gives every meal a delightful, unique, and sweet taste. From research findings, there are numerous health benefits from scent leaf. Scent leaf aids digestion. It helps bowel evacuation and weight management. It can be used to treat oral infections as it kills all bacteria in the mouth, which cause tooth decay and bad breath. Scent leaf is used in the treatment of fever, cold, catar, as well as skin infections like ringworm. Scent leaf has antibacterial activities against Staphylococcus aureus, Salmonella enteritis. Extracts from scent leaf has also been reported to lower blood pressure blood sugar, and potent for the treatment of gastroenteritis, and lots more. Scent leaf can be taken as a tonic. It can be taken like salad or added to dishes during cooking. Come with me to our clinical segment for tips on healthy living. You don't wait for oral conditions 
to degenerate into chronic phase before you seek dental care. Routinely, you are meant to see your dentist every six months because dental diseases, they progress very slowly. So patients are encouraged, or citizens are encouraged to seek dental um, assessment periodically, at least two times every year. You're supposed to be doing scaling and polishing. That is uh, professional cleaning of your mouth in the dental clinic. It is not everything in your mouth that your, dent, your, your toothbrush can remove. So you need the professionals to clean your teeth for you from time to time. Again, we also emphasize diet. We tell our patients to ensure that they eat right. Eat fiber-rich diets, fruits and vegetables, we emphasize. And then avoid sugary or snacky foods like cakes and or, or pastries and the likes. These carogenic diets are what really give rise to tooth decay. Because by the time the bacteria or the microorganism in your mouth feeds on them and then releases their waste into your mouth, you drop the pH of the mouth. And once that pH falls below a certain level, which we call the critical level, the hard to tissue will dissolve and then cavity will form. So patients will try to brush at least twice every day with a fluoride containing toothpaste. They should also try to use dental floss as against the use of toothpicks. They should On our perception segment, we give you the opportunity to express your views about nation building, improving human lives, and the ad sector. The situation is a little bit tough, but um, I believe with corporations and if we join hands together, we can take Nigeria, we can move Nigeria forward. Which, by you, look around your environment, who, who, is, who, is, who, who, who needs something or what can you empower us? You do your best. We shouldn't leave everything for the Nigerian government. You know. This is where we draw the curtain on the program this week. Please join us same time next week for another interesting edition of this show. Please encourage us by advertising your health products and services on the program. My name is Oshua Mowa Dennis. Please keep staying safe.